Hey everybody, welcome back for episode number seven of the Poker Vlog. I'm Michael from Flopwell Poker, and today I'm taking you with me to the World Series of Poker. We didn't do so well, we had two bullets, fired the first one off on a bluff and got called down. Second bullet, we run pretty good. Let's get right into the action. Let's get this one going. We're here at the WSOP for the $300 event. Uh, the employee event didn't go so well, so that was a couple. That was the first event. Now we're entering the gladiator. <laughs> I don't know why. Why I just said it like that. I don't know. Um, kind of created a game plan is to get it all in <laughs> early. <laughs> One bullet. Yep. So, if you guys are ready, let the battle begin, and dealers, please, shuffle up and deal. So we just sit down at the Gladiator Tournament, and the first hand we pick up is 5-8 suited in the hijack. I love these types of suited two-gappers. They play extremely well deep stack, and at the beginning of a tournament, these first levels are all deep stack and play just like cash games. The under the gun plus one player raised the 300, folds to us, we make the call and everyone else folds. We're going heads up in position to a flop, which comes out queen nine five with two clubs on board. I don't know about you, but I would say we flop pretty well right here. Our opponent leads out for $600 and we go ahead and make the call. This is a very normal C bet for cards like Ace King, Ace Jack, even Ace 10. Against some styles of players, I do prefer to raise with these smaller flushes, but seeing how this is the first hand of the tournament, I don't know how my opponent plays. Heading to a turn card, our draw does come through with a seven of clubs. What do you know, we also pick up a gut shot straight flush draw. I don't expect our opponent to lead out here very often. Unless maybe he does have some holdings that contain the ace of clubs, then he should be over betting the pot here. He now elects to check with the club on the board, showing a little bit of weakness. Here in this spot on the very first hand of the tournament, we decided to disguise our hand a little bit and check back. The reason for this is if a club comes on the river and he leads out for a big amount, we can easily detach from the hand and get away very cheap. And if a club doesn't come on the river, our hand is more than likely good. And by checking the turn, we're checking for value and he's more than likely gonna fire on the river with most of his holdings. After we both check, the river comes, a card from the gods, the six of clubs. We hit a straight flush on the very first hand of the tournament. And even better, our opponent now leads out without hesitation for 1.2K. I'm pretty sure and confident that my opponent does not have the ace of clubs. If so, like I said, I think he would have double barreled the turn. So we have to target the king of clubs or jack of clubs here. We raise to 8,000. After about a minute of tanking, our opponent does put in the calling chips and we show him the bad news. Right now, I feel like I could be a model for a watch company because I was blessed with one of the most beautiful hands in the world. The tournament is off to a great start. We got paid big on our first hand Let's keep this run good and flop well up. The next hand we play is on level three and we have ace king offsuit in the under the gun position. I'm first to act pre-flop and I raise to $800. Normally I'm not raising this big on hands, but it's the beginning of the tournament and this table was quite sticky to begin with. After we raise, we get two callers, one from the button and one from the big blind. The flop comes out queen 10-3 with two clubs on board. I don't know if I've said this before, but I really do hate queen high boards when you have ace king. The big blind now leads out for 1k into this pot. And similar to all my clean laundry, I don't think we can fold it. We end up making the call and so does the button. The dealer peels off the turn card, it's the nine of spades. The big blind checks to me, obviously he didn't like this card. This is a good time for us to take advantage of the spot. We fire out 2.3k into the pot. The button makes the call and the big blind gets out of the way. I think it was time we start taking advantage of some of the smaller stacks and start bullying on some people. 
the river card comes a complete blank for us. Five of hearts. Being out of position, I feel like I'm gonna have to fight for this pot first. If we check our ace high to him, we're gonna allow him to bet all of his missed draws. If he missed the flush draw, missed the straight draw, even if he missed his mom and hasn't seen her in two years, he's gonna be betting that as an excuse here. And then on the times that he does have showdown value, he's gonna check back and we're gonna lose the pot anyway. The only way to win this is to go for it with a large bet sizing. We overbet the pot and completely shove on it here all in. This player now tanks for about three minutes before another player threatens to call the clock on him for abuse of time. He eventually ends up making the fold saying that he had a pair of queens for a one pair holding and his kicker wasn't strong enough to make the call. The next big hand we get into, we're at level seven with jack five suited on the button. It gets folded to us and we make a raise. We make it 2.5K to go and the small blind polarizes to 7.5K. I've seen this player make a few moves that were a little out of line already. So we think about putting in the four bet, but in position, we just elect for a call here. We absolutely flop so well with the six, seven, 10, two diamond board. The small blind now elects the lead out for 5K. My hand has a little too much equity to fold, but calling here seems kind of silly. We're gonna end up committing our whole stack by the river. We really want to take advantage of all this fold equity that we have while our stack is big enough. What's the difference between jelly and jam? We didn't jelly our whole stack into the pot right here on a flush draw. After tanking for what felt like an eternity, our opponent does make the call. He shows that he has middle pair with a gut shot straight draw. All we need now is a diamond, a jack, or some runner runner help. But the poker gods have other plans as they throw out two running black nines to give my opponent a 10 high straight and we hit the rail. During this time, we end up going to the reg line and throwing in a second bullet. But before we get to that, let's take a look at this week's episode of Dealer Diaries. Dear Diary, can the player stop asking the dealer for change when they need change for the cocktail waitress? Just have the cocktail waitress give you change. It's that simple. Also, can someone please tell her friends from Europe that it's really hard to tell if they're checking when their finger gently taps the table one time. And don't look at me like I'm an idiot for not seeing your fingernail move. Please understand that the dealer cannot leave in the middle of their shift and get you a rack for your chips. Go find a friggin' rack like every other poker player does in the room. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the content. Make sure you follow and subscribe to Flopwell Poker. Help me help you, Jerry Maguire, Alicia Silverstone, Mila Kunis. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Let's get right back into the action, guys. I was on my second bullet. I shove stole a 9K pot and things were looking good. We're on level nine. The blinds are up to 1.5, 1.5. We're in the big blind with ace queen suited. The low jack and one other player limped in. The small blind folded, it gets to us. We raise to 5K. The low jack now jams his entire stack for about 23K total. The other person folds and we call. The low jack turns over two red sevens and his tournament life is at risk with a coin toss. The board runs out pretty clean for us with ace five eight on the flop. Turn is another ace, and the river is a nine. We pick up a good amount of big blinds, and our tournament life is looking good right now. The next hand was the same level, and exactly one orbit later, we're in the big blind with eight nine suited. A middle position player had just limped in, and the button raises to 3K. We make the call, and so does the middle position player. The flop runs out an eight high flop with two hearts. Very favorable for us. We're looking to get some chips in here. Middle position now leads out for 4.5K and the button folds. I'm not gonna just call here. I like to opt for a raise. Our hand is strong enough that even if we miss the turn, we can jam it all in and still have fold equity with the size of our stack. We raise to a total of 15K. We don't have to worry about playing a turn because just like Doug Flutie, 
Our opponent goes for a Hail Mary and rips in his entire stack. Our hand is too strong to fold here. We snap call. Our opponent literally turns over the last hand we think he would have, pocket seven. This is a strange spot for him to shove his whole stack. We're really never gonna have bluffs here and we're hardly ever gonna have a hand that's gonna fold to his bet. Majority of the time we're gonna have heart draws, we're gonna have eights, and we're gonna have over pairs. The board goes runner runner brick for him and we win this massive pop. We're up over 130K right now in chips, sitting pretty damn good. We just cracked two big hands against pocket sevens, hoping to keep it up. Next hand we look at is two ladies. We're in the big blind, it's level 10. The blinds went up to 2K, 2K. The under the gun player raises to 4.5K. It folds around to us and we're just gonna put them all in for the remainder of their stack. They quickly make the call, and to our surprise, you'd never guess what hand they turn over. If you guessed pocket sevens, then you're 100% right. I'm thinking in my mind, there's absolutely no way that we can beat the same hand three times in a row. The flop comes out pretty safe with two kings and a six, all rainbow. But the turn is a seven, crushing our heart, and the river is a blank. I knew that there was no possible way that we could beat the same hand three times in a row. Fortunately for us, they didn't have that many big blinds, so we still have a lot of chips to play with. After five levels later of being card dead and spot dead and not having really any big hands, we find ourselves with King Deuce of Diamonds in the small blind. We've been hovering right around 100k in chips, and during this hand we had 115k to start. Under the gun plus two raised to 16k, the hijack calls, the button calls, and we make the call. We end up seeing a king high flop with one diamond on the board. It checks all the way around to the button and he bets 12k. We make the call, the under the gun player folds and the hijack calls as well. The turn card comes, the king of hearts. We improve our hand to three of a kind, but we check cause our kicker is kinda weak. It checks around to the button and the button jams all in to put both of us at risk. We end up tanking to make a decision, but in real time, I was thinking there's no hands that I'm ever beating here that he shoves. Only shoving hands are gonna be better hands than mine. At best, I'm gonna be drawing to a chop. If he already has nines or threes, then I'm almost drawing dead. We eventually end up throwing in a calling chip and then the hijack folds. I know if I just hesitated and waited another 30 seconds, I could have ended up making the fold here. That's where my mind was siding with originally to begin with. Our opponent shows us his hand and he has King Jack suited to have us absolutely dominated. We're drawing to a deuce for the win or a paired board for a chop. Our tournament life is at risk and a 10 of spades doesn't bring what we need. We hit the rail for the second time today. No more bullets left. It was a decent little run that we had. We got some good cards. But in the end, our inexperience in tournaments and a little bit of impatience got the best of us. Hey, that's all for the episode today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more episodes of Flop Well Poker. I hope you always flop well, run good, and smash that river. Hey everybody, if you're looking for more videos, there's one right here. Click on this for more content from Flop Well Poker.